Hey everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Scott, and welcome to Witches Betwixt. Uh, today we're going to be talking about witchcraft and... Politics. Ooh. Yes, yes. Uh, Ooh. Yes, yes. So yeah. due to some recent events that unfortunately we can't exactly divulge too, too much about, it's kind of prompted us to, to uh, take a whack at this, I suppose. Yeah, um, personally, I'm a little fired up about... Um, I'm, I'm a little fired up about this topic of, of bringing um, politics into witchcraft and the pagan community. That's kind of where I'm just going to say it. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm amped about it. I, I, I think I just want to start off by saying I respect everybody's political alignment, mm -hmm. whatever. I may not agree with it. But that's what makes America America, is that we all have our different political leanings, and we can be who, what we want to be, we can, we can think what we want to think, okay? The thing is, we also have free speech, so we can say what we want to say, absolutely, but that does not mean that everyone has to listen to you. Or that you're immune to repercussions. Exactly, or like hate you. Speech. Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, you can you can stand on your soapbox and say a bunch of political garbage, whatever, hate speech, whatever you want. Yeah, you are well within your right to say it, but we do not have to listen to it. Is basically where I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. So other other than just this one incident that we were kind of that just kind of recently came up. But I, I'm finding this a lot overall in the witch, in the witch and pagan community. Um, this also really does overlap with the queer community too. And I under, I mean, I understand politics being involved in the queer community because politics, I mean, it drives a lot of why the queer community is what it is. It's very politically driven because yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. but we've had to be right. But for the witchcraft community, I don't know if that, or the witch and pagan community, I'm just going to use them kind of interchangeably, because, um, no, you don't have to be pagan to be a witch, but I'm talking about these two groups. Um, uh, shit, what was I getting at? Um, basically what I was thinking is, like, you don't, you don't have to have your, like, we're not, we don't have to be political. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to be. In order to be a witch, you do not have to worry about the government. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Like, to practice witchcraft in your own personal time, in your own personal space, you do not need the permission of the government. You do not need... You know, it's not like we're... It's not like we're going to um, clinics and getting our candles... We're not going to, you know, government-funded places to get our witchcraft supplies. Right. You know what I mean? It's us, it's nature, it's the powers that be, that's it, no government involved. Now, in terms of religious freedom and things like that, that's where it can get a little political and tricky. But I'm just saying, in order to be a witch, being a witch is not a political statement. And I know there are people that will disagree with me on that. But being a... I'm, I'm saying this. This is not reflective of, of Scott's opinion. I am saying that being a witch does not... It is not a political stance. Okay. Okay. I hear you. So that's what I'm going to open. I'm going to open with that. <laughs> I, um... It's funny because... Being a witch or being a pagan is not a political stance. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> I would probably say maybe being pagan isn't for me. But, um... I, it's funny, I, I, here's how I, okay, here it is. Lay it on. You can be as involved, mm -hmm. whether witch, pagan, Christian, Muslim, whatever you may be, you can be as involved or as not involved in politics as you choose to be. Independent That's your, of your craft. In Independent general, of your faith. In general, yeah. right. You could choose, and you could choose to make that as political or not as political as you want to. I would, I would agree with that, yeah. I agree to people's choices. However, I... It's funny, and, and I may not necessarily... I don't necessarily put my witchcraft with my politics, but 
I do see how witchcraft, at least for me, is intrinsically political. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I, I read an article by Matt, Matt uh, Matthew, uh, Matt, Matt, it's not Matthew, Matt Aaron, um, and, you know, he, he discussed some really interesting points. Um, he, he discussed, you know, when the, the second people were, were burned at the stake and hung in, in accusation of witchcraft, witchcraft became political. Um, the second, uh, you know, when, when, when it became about hunting females and hunting women, um, and, and even, uh, uh, trans feminine, uh, identifying folks, um, when it became about hunting them and, 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 and harming them because of just their femininity or their feminine whatevers, um, wiles or feminine qualities, whatever, you know, it became political. Um, witchcraft has always kind of been the home of the pariah. It's always been the home of the black sheep mm -hmm. and the outcast. Uh, witchcraft has embedded within its folklore, um, a history also of like anti uh, ableism of like it is it was believed uh, in certain places that witches were born sickly because yeah. you were half dead and half alive. Yeah, that's true. Um, or like so, if you had like a deformity. Deformities exactly. were seen right exactly. Um, I would say that witchcraft has always you know another thing too is that witches have always put themselves in the politics. Many, many witches, um, and, and, uh, throughout, throughout the span of, of at least European sun history. Sun and darkness. <laughs> I know, that's so <laughs> the weird. The sun. Um. Do you want to flip, is that your light switch? Uh, yeah. Do you want to flip that on? There we go. Many witches, um, have put themselves in politics. Um, you know, cursing kings, mm -hmm. working with kings and queens, working with groups of people, villages, um, uh, tr uh, country gathering tribes, etc., shamans, um, medicine men, you know, those things were political. We were, we were the politicians back in the day, um, pre-Christianity. Um, I and mean, whether which or not, but magic mm -hmm. workers in general yeah. were, um, political. I, you know, I have a quote here from a book that is actually all about this. It's called Apocalyptic Witchcraft by Peter Gray. Mm -hmm. I unfortunately have not yet read it. I do want to. Um, it's written sort of like poetry, but it's like a manifesto. It's kind of cool. Um, I would like to read that with you yeah. um, one day. But anyway, um, in, in uh, one of the quotes from the book that I really like, it goes like this. Witchcraft is the recourse of the dispossessed, the powerless, the hungry, and the abused. It gives heart and tongue to stones and trees. It wears the rough skin of beasts. It turns on civilization that knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And, you know, it's really interesting that he talks about, like, you know, basically the, the lesser people, like, the people that have less being drawn, being witches, being drawn to witchcraft, because it's so interesting, because there's definitely, at least in modern times, and I feel like even maybe a little bit in history, that the wealthy were often seen um, dabbling in those things right and you know what a lot of people don't know um and this i only learned about this in the last two or three years is that the history of like the inquisition like pre-inquisition believe it or not they pretty much left alone cunning folk and traditional healers Really? They were, they were like, the priests would kind of be like, oh, maybe not go to them, maybe. I mean, like, you're gonna maybe, but don't really. Mm -hmm. Like, it was kind of like... Because they weren't as easy to take. It, it just, the relationship was very different. Things did not start out, you know, Europe did not start out as, you know, a big cloud. It just didn't suddenly become a big cloud of witches' smoke, to quote yeah. Hanna-Barbera movie. <laughs> um, it didn't start out that way. Um, it was actually a very gradual process that became the Inquisition. Well, yeah, because it was the, the rise of, of one religion and sort of like the, um, you know, stamping out the other. Right, so the one, the new one had to grow yeah. in order to actually be able to do it. Right. Yeah. So while it was growing, it was just kind of trying to distance... It's actually funny. There's this, there's this new show 
on Netflix mm -hmm. called Disenchantment. Mm -hmm. Have you seen ads for it? Mm -hmm. Matt, Matt Groening. My boyfriend was watching it, yes, the other day. It was kind of funny because it, like, it's a cartoon in complete fantasy. Like, I'm not trying to say it's this okay. is accurate. But it was, like, they were just, like, taking all these different things from all these different religions and, like, the nun, priestess, whatever she was, looked really gothic. And, like, and like someone in the show it was, like, really meta about itself. Like, someone in the show made a comment, like, we're still figuring this religion out. Like, it, <laughs> it made me, like, because it was, like, a blend of, like, witchcraft and, like, Christianity and, like, Catholic, like, you know, like, hardcore Catholicism and, like... It was it was really funny because I was like, oh my god, you know what? It, it probably was like that at one point. Interesting. Like it was probably similar to that. Interestingly enough, the parallel that I could draw to that is, I mean, and this this in and of itself is very political because it shows once again, like you said, about the disparities between wealth. Yeah. Because the people who were actually harmed in the Inquisition were not rich. Not were not studied men. You see, universities used to basically be like Hogwarts. They were easy to. Right. See, universities, like real universities, when they first came about, they were teaching courses on astrology, mm -hmm. um, uh, ceremonial uh, Christian magic, etc. Mm -hmm. Those men were not touched by the Inquisition. No. Because they were the learned men. They had money. Mm -hmm. It was the poor people who were practicing indigenous religions mm -hmm. who were harmed. I they mean, were easier to, you know, cart away and stamp mm -hmm. out. Right. I mean, like in France, for instance, there is a whole, there was a whole village in France. Men, women, children, and I actually think I remember reading, like, animals were all burned. Just to erase them. Because they thought, the priests came in and they thought everybody was either possessed by witches or was a witch or they thought the animals were demons. Like, they wiped out an entire village in France. Okay. You more to say on that? I, I think it's really just about... I, I think what I'm all I'm trying to get at is really is that I mean I'm not trying to say that I'm the most political like I don't really know much about politics the jargon is a little confusing for you me. You know what pisses you off though. I know. And you know I know what makes you happy. I know what's right and wrong, and I know what makes me happy. Right, mm -hmm. and I it at its core I believe that witchcraft should be there to stand against oppression should be there as a, a pushback. As a tool. Uh, uh, right. As, as, a, as an entity that which is involved in pushing back against oppression and, and, and systemic harm. Um, and that, but I do believe that in, in, in a way to kind of, I guess, not devil's advocate really, but mm -hmm. kind of agree with you, I do believe it's a choice that you can make. It's not something that you have to do. But I yeah, do you believe can choose that, to combine the two. Right. But I do believe that witchcraft in and of its... Like, witchcraft as a whole is political, but it's an it's a facet of sorcery and uh, that you are, you are allowed to choose. But that that's... Like, anything in witchcraft, you know, we, we're heavy on it's your choice. Right. You choose your life. You choose your path. You choose your fate, your destiny. Um, well, you choose your destiny. I don't know if you choose your fate. That's a, yeah. yeah, it's a little... Yeah, you choose your destiny. Hello, the fates. <laughs> <laughs> you choose your destiny, and yeah. So, is witchcraft political for me? Yes. Am I yeah. always? Is it for in general? Yes. For me, I'm not a hardcore activist, but I am one of those people who like, if I see injustice, like, out on the street, you'll say something. I I'm gonna. It's funny because you know me. I'm not, I'm not a very. I don't like confrontation. I'm, no. You know, I'm anxious, whatever. But the thing with me is that I start to get really upset when I'm in an environment. Yeah. Of, very of, visibly upset. Yeah. Um. So at that point, it kind of becomes uh, like I have to. It, it has to come out, or I'm not going to be okay, and it's not going to sit right. Like, because then I'm going to walk away from that, and I want to be really upset, and I'm going to really be mad at myself for not saying something. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I've I've. I've had moments where, you know, I'm ready. Like, you know, like, I remember one time I, I the, in the situation, I was in Center City and some guy said something incredibly um, Islamophobic mm -hmm. to uh, an Islamic family. And, I mean, they shut him down very quickly. And generally speaking, you should let the oppressed person have the first voice. Like, they should be kind of 
you're there to support them because you're there to bolster them. Right, yeah. But it should be them first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they shut it down very quickly. The man walked away. It really wasn't yeah. a big issue, um, thankfully. Mm -hmm. uh, and they seemed very much okay. And I, I smiled at them and they smiled back and it was okay. Um, but I was ready. You know what I'm saying? And that yeah. for me to do that. Mm -hmm. So is my witchcraft political? Yes. Does it have to be? No. Right. So I think that's where, that's where I'm kind of at is um, I feel like as I, as I grow as a witch, as a pagan, as I grow within both of these communities, I find myself be, um, uh, falling into a more public view. Yeah, me and you are definitely winding our way yeah. to... Which is fine. I'm not saying I'm trying to become witch famous, but, you know, if it happens, hey, whatever. You can find me on Twitter. <laughs> uh, no, no but... I really am trying to become witch famous. I'm not even going <laughs> uh, My destiny. No, I mean, like, I just, I have opinions and I have thoughts and I want to talk about them. That's what it And is. I'm also involved in, like, Pagan Pride Day and stuff like that. So. And I will be next year. Mm-hmm. So, um... You know, I just, I find myself entering a more public sphere, and I'm encountering a lot of people who are very politically charged in their practice. And I'm just curious if, because I see, I think sometimes as witches, we, we struggle a bit. Sometimes I feel like we hold too much on to our past and our history, but at the same time, our past and our history are full of such a wealth of knowledge. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, no, like, I guess, like, you know, uh, you take something as simple as, like, I'm sure there are some witches out there who are 100% purists in the sense of, like, no, you gotta make your own candles. How dare you buy them from a store? You know what I mean? Uh, honey, it's the 21st century. I you haven't seen buy that yet, but candle. it probably exists. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure you're out there. If you're out there... Bless, I will buy your teach handmade me. candles. Teach me. Or teach me how to make candles. That, that, that sounds cool. Ooh, that'd be fun. In particular if they're hand dipped candles. Because yeah. that's I'm really into that. <laughs> but um but yeah, so there's that. So, you know, I'm sure like there there's different levels of witchcraft, but I'm just saying I think we hold on to our past too much. So like you were saying in the past, witches, conning folk, people of magic power, whatever, they were in the political sphere. Mm -hmm. They were part of that. This is gonna sound horrible. Go ahead. Do we belong there now? If you ask me, yes. Like, because I'm speaking from an American perspective. Technically, and I know this is never put into practice, but technically, there is separation of church and state. Witchcraft There's, isn't a religion. Is it though? I think it is legally a religion. Wicca. I mean, they acknowledge Wicca as a religion. They acknowledge Wicca? But I want to double check that fact, but I think it's witchcraft in general. I'm not sure. I am But the that. point is that as people of a particular practice, do we belong in the political sphere? Like, okay, so you are a witch, right? Mm hmm and so does that mean that you have a right to sit next to the mayor and dictate what happens to the city? I mean, as a, as a citizen, I do have the right to dictate what happens. No, no, no. I'm saying as a citizen, but I'm just saying, like, as a witch, do you have a right to be on whatever board or committee? I mean, well, I get where you're going. Times have changed, and obviously... We're not, you know, doing divination for, you know, the president anymore and deciding, yeah. you know, when to go to war and when not. And I, I, I feel that. And I actually like that. Mm -hmm. um, but. Because that's very easy. It's very easily corruptible. Because there are witches out there who are full of shit. You're right. They're You're right. absolutely full of shit. You know, it, it, it's kind of like, you and like, know... Yeah, they may have a following and they have status, but having a following and status does not indicate power. It does not indicate You're, Yeah, that's, that's true, but I, 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 I really do kind of... I really agree here with that quote I read, uh, witchcraft is the recourse to the dispossessed, the powerless, the hungry, and the abused. I, I really do... And I think that's because of my experience. 
because of what witchcraft did for me. It kept me alive. It kept yeah. me from killing myself. I'm gonna not to be dark, not to be broody, but um, it, it 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 kept me alive mm-hmm. for years without actually getting you know having a therapist without ever being able to finally make the calling and get help up until you know this recent this year um and and for me that that represents that it represents that struggle it represents the struggle of people who are harmed by a tyrannical government like what we're in right now but there are witches on the other side there are witches in support of the you call it a tyrannical government they call it the best goddamn thing ever. But the thing is, is that opinion... See, <laughs> there's, there's opinion... But then it's a question of who is the... So, like, witchcraft is of the oppressed. Who's the oppressed? The problem is, is that we know who the oppressed is. We know who they are because we can see it. Because the thing are. is, is that just because those people on the other side have... they You can have an opinion, it doesn't make you right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I agree with that. But then, of course, I know that, you know, the thought would be to aim that back. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that you know that we know for, like, pretty much a a sociological fact that there is a certain, there are are certain disparities between, like, you know, white, cis, het, well-off people. Men. Men in particular, (laughs) but women, too, sometimes. Um... And a lot, and, and, and marginalized people. So, right. like, when when those people who are normally, if you ever realize, those witches tend to be well off. Now, maybe not rich, yes, but they, they tend, tend to be to middle. Be, they tend to be. They tend to not struggle financially. Right. They uh, they are in a two per. They're in two income household. Mm. So the general most of them, Usually I've no always kids. realized. No, right. I realize they don't kids. have kids. Um, they're in they're in a very privileged situation, so it's easy for them to kind of want to to follow that herd of people that 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 mind of people who's kind of like, oh, you know, you're only poor because you don't work hard enough. No, my mother can work her work circles around them, and she's almost 50, 50 something. She'll kill me for saying that. Yeah. But five zero. Sorry, she's yeah. Show work circles around half of them fucking bitches. But, like, <laughs> I was trying not to curse, but I can't help it. Whatever. Um, you know, it, it, it poorness is a systemic problem. It is not the poor people's fault. I would agree with that. Yeah. And if witchcraft can be a tool, as it has been for years, in order to aid us in uplifting ourselves... You know, in, 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 you know, I know this is weird to quote the Bible in a, in a show about pagan things, but it's a, it's a part of the Bible that I really do it's appreciate. Text. The meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. And I like I've always appreciated that quote. Um, I've always seen the Bible as something that's incredibly interpretable anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always interpreted it that it is those people who believe in an, in, in an open, loving society who wants to embrace each other with open arms to, to experience a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a companionship of humanity, a, a, a togetherness of humanity. You know, and, and I know it all sounds hippy dippy, but the thing is, is that we all secretly want that. Even the most pessimistic of us secretly has this desire to see a world where when you bump into someone on the street instead of get oh fuck you man like watch where you're going yeah oh it's cool dude like not a problem like you i mean even people who want this like you know totally crazy like racially pure world like let's just say like a world full of white people or something even people who are nuts enough to think like that they still want peace to a point you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I even, mean, if, even if it means being horrible and shitty to everyone else, they right. still want to achieve But peace. you want to know something, though, and that, that's a thing, though. Because, like, and this is kind of me being, I guess, nice to people I disagree with um, acutely. Um, a lot of them are uneducated or undereducated. Yeah. Um, in one way or another. The thing is, is that we look at education because a lot of people will say, oh, well, there are lawyers who are, you know... Education... But education can mean a lot of things. In terms of, in terms of America, 
I do not. Okay, just because. Okay, you could go K through twelve. You know. Okay, you got your high school diploma. That does not mean you are educated. In like, yeah, you received an education given to you that was mandated by the American government. It's not the best. If you went to a good school and you got a good education, good on you. Good job. You succeeded. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's not. It's not a. It's not a real education. <laughs> I know, like I use the word "real," like what is real? Um, but no, it's not. It's not a. Re- it's not real life education. Education. You learn the most when you graduate high school. Yeah. And you have to enter the working world as you learn by experience. Yes, you, learn you learn by, by doing. Experience. So that is the education. I think that's what we're talking about when we say education. I'm not right. saying you know how to do your math and experience you know, your and doing. Yes. Being, learning Interacting with people, people who are different from you. Right. Exactly. The experience. Mm-hmm. Getting cultured. Doing different things. Even going to restaurants. Like like real original restaurants of like other yeah. cultures. My, Even that. My parents just... I'm not repping on them. I am a little bit. Whatever. They're my parents. I love you. Anyway. Um, I love sushi. Right? I love sushi. Let's go to sushi place. We can go to sushi place right now. Right now. Just to pause this podcast and we'll go right now. But that bothers them. That bothers them. They're like, mm-hmm. how could you eat that? It's like, yeah, well, I really want to try an Ethiopian place. Like, that's <laughs> been on my radar, too. Yeah, Their stuff's good. really spicy. So, like, I that can't sounds cool, right? Nice. Uh, I'll go. <laughs> yeah, we'll go. I mean, I have to be careful, too, but I really don't care. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I really want to try, like, Ethiopian food and, like, and I had, like, a, like African, like, peanut potato soup and that was so amazing like i like trying new foods me too i love it i grew up on hamburger helper and rice aroni and overcooked chicken i'm so sorry i grew up in south philly so my mom cooked every night (laughs) like bless bless (laughs) you know like my mom she cooked out of necessity to feed the family yeah i'm alive but it was not great. And she'll be the first one to admit. She's like, my cooking is boring, but you're fed. And I'm like, great. Yeah, you're right. But, like, don't give me shit for eating sushi because mm-hmm. it tastes good. <laughs> you my, know? my father does that type of stuff as well. Like, a lot. It's funny how, like, you know. I mean, like, I don't how do you eat that garbage? You just had a McDonald's cheeseburger. How do you eat that garbage? Right. I eat that garbage, too, sometimes. I shouldn't. I actually don't because it gives me stomach aches. I'm very good. But, um, you know, like recently, I don't even know. I may have talked about this already. I don't really care. I'll tell you it again. I went to an amazing Chinese food restaurant called Han Dynasty here in University City. Yeah. Was and it expensive? More so, yeah. Damn. It was, it was, I mean, at least. Are we trying to go there after this episode? I would, lo- <laughs> I would love, I was actually thinking about for my next birthday, yeah. um, wanting a birthday there. Um, this place is traditional Chinese food, like Chinese food, Chinese food, not like, not like American, not Chinese. American Chinese food. Um, they, they serve in traditional Chinese style, which is family style. Everything is served in large portions with, you get a blank plate, like a, there's a plate and you serve yourself. Ooh, you put what you want on your plate that's nice. and you, you, you generally should order a couple of things yeah. and that's how that's you really eat. Cool. And it's an amazing place. The food is... <gasps> My God, I've never, it was, I've never had an eating experience like that, eating out. I've never been wowed in that way. It's food, it tastes good in other places, but this wowed me. Um, we got a little off topic. Sorry, it? sorry. But, um, and no, but it, it kind of goes into politics and, like, accepting different cultures and stuff. So, <laughs> I'm going to bring this back a little bit to politics. I'm going to bring it back to, so, okay, I think we can establish that we both agree. So, okay. You you say that being a witch is inherently political, given our history. If you mm-hmm. trace our history, our, our lineage, our roots, whatever. Also, I mean, even now, people... Okay. The experience of people who are being called to be political, it says something. Okay. There are hundreds... Look at whether you agreed with it or not, because uh, even witches who don't like the current mm-hmm. government didn't always necessarily support... Uh, what I'm about to bring up, but the, the, the binding and the cursing of Trump and his constituents. Oh, yeah, because there were all those witches who got together, and, or not got that together, was, but they collectively that focused was their energy. a couple thousand people all over the world. 
um, you know, it that also, we can that we could track. So I mean, it's. I guess I'll just say this: it's no secret. I do not like try. I don't support him. I didn't vote for him. Oh no, neither one. Okay, is. it's not a secret here. So um, when I saw that they were doing that, I was like, oh hell yeah, like that's super cool. But like for all those people to focus that energy, I'm curious if he's got people in his corner, like bouncing it back. I or really, protecting him I or mean, something. It's 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 funny because, you know, I you know I work off of a very strong spirit model yeah. of, of witchcraft. Um without the spirits, you know, I probably would think that witchcraft probably wouldn't work or at least not as well. But um I wonder sometimes if the spirits are there, like, like for instance, like, how do I put this? Kind of like a right and wrong situation. Mm. Kind of like, you, they, like, the other side knows he's fucking up and leading us into extreme danger. Mm. So why would the spirits let their people be put in danger by the hands of someone that they can't, or someone that's trying to control and dominate? Right. You got what I'm trying to get at here? Mm. Um... So I wonder sometimes, like, for instance, like, uh, a lot of the authors that I mentioned, uh, I mentioned Matt Aaron a lot. I just really respect his writing. He wrote a status on Facebook uh, at some point, and he made a really good point. Look at what's happening right now. Look at the decline. You know, we have, you know, now we have, what's his name, and getting indicted. He, he, he um, uh, pled guilty. You know, and, and it, it basically, I, I agree with Matt. It is working. But, you know, the thing is, is that I think we want... It's working. It's not taking the, the face of the problem. It's taking the people out from under him, I guess. Which is what a lot of people thought was best. A I lot suppose. of people felt that that was the but best then situation. My, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to make this into a political fuck Trump episode. I really don't want to, because... Our opinions are our opinions. Your opinions can vary. That's fine. I, I, I mean, I, I just, I feel as though the people that are going to watch our show, probably the majority of, of our viewers is probably like, yeah, fuck Trump. Yeah. But um, but I don't want to make it that. But um, you know, I, I'm just, it's almost like, and I, I reference the cartoon, movie Hercules a lot because there's just so much good symbolism in that movie. Plus, it's a great movie when he's fighting the Hydra. And he keeps cutting the heads off, and then more heads keep growing. Me back. That's my only concern with taking out the people under him, is that they're just going to be replaced with another problematic person that he will appoint, or his people will appoint, and then it's just it's just a run in a circle. I, I think it's there. more of a matter of, like, after, like, once one head gets cut off, the good thing is that we get to, like, kind of run interception. Yeah, maybe it's like once one head gets cut off, the other heads get confused for a minute, and they're like, oh, what do we do? Yeah. And then... And then that's... And the good thing is, is that that seems to be what they're doing right now. Uh, yeah, well, it, it, it gives the, 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 the investigators a, a chance to go further in and investigate deeper and deeper and deeper. Possibly. And it keeps falling down like dominoes. So it kind of maybe isn't necessarily a head regenerative thing, at least maybe. not yet. It seems so, like it's falling... I guess really what I want to to ask here is, all right. So I believe that being a witch is not inherently political. Scott believes that being a witch is not it is is inherently political. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we differ on our opinion there, which is totally fine. But I can understand your point, and you can understand my I point. I can. So when is there a point in Say you're involved in a, in a pagan group. Not necessarily a coven, just like a group. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, witches of Philly, Philly witches, whatever. Um, you're involved in a group, and you're partnering with another group, or allying with another group, or whatever the case is. When is it okay to put your politics in, and when is it... Like, how much is too much? Where is the line? Yeah, okay, so here we're definitely going to agree. Um, if, if the situation in and of itself is not a political situation, like, like if, if it's not a political like a event, fair. right, you don't need to bring in politics to a craft fair. 
Right. You don't need to bring in politics to Pagan Pride Day. Things True. like that. Um, it is an event for the community to come together to talk about our religion, to talk about similar religions, to talk about um, magic and sorcery and grimoires and spells and potions and herbal healing and which uh, shit everything that we do. <laughs> right, right. It is not, you know, and 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 uh, yeah. So uh, there's a time and a place for everything. Yeah. And now, if it was like. Uh, a rally, right? Right. If it was like a rally, like, which is against Trump, or which there, is for Trump. There's an organization here in Philadelphia, uh, which is, ba basically it's a, a which is against. Yeah, which is against. Uh, the whatever. Uh, they invited me, they, they followed me on Instagram, mm -hmm. and they invited me, they found me on Facebook, mm -hmm. and added me to their page, which I didn't mind at all. I actually am very interested um, it's just social anxiety continuously blocked me from going to one of their meetings. I, I want to go. Um, I'll go with you. Okay. I'll go with you, baby. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, just also to meet other witches, too. Yeah. But um, for a common goal, that's pretty cool. But I know what that group's for. That right. group says this is a political organization of witches. Right. We are political. Okay, great. Put that in your thing. You know what I mean? We are political. We, or we are... Maybe state you're leaning. You know right. What I mean? like, like, we are like, a conservative group. We are a liberal group. We are a centrist group. We are whatever the hell we are. So, like, going there, I know what to expect. I know that I could be talking about stuff and like that. And you know this. you're going to find like-minded people. So, like, you know that you could walk in there and be like, I don't like Donald Trump. And most people would be like, same. Exactly. Um, however, when you're going to an event that doesn't have to do with politics, and if... Don't get me wrong, everybody, you have a right to defend yourself, at least in my opinion. Like, yeah. if someone at an event starts with you aggressively about your politics, for whatever reason right, that like, it, they start... Like, we're vendors at an event, right? And, like, I'm talking to, you know, my person here, just talking to them at a normal conversation level, being like, yeah, I really like Trump's policy, and blah, 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 blah. For you to jump in and be like, hey, fuck you, blah, 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 would be just not okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that right. would be not okay because we're talking at a level, we're talking about things that we're talking about. It does not involve you. You know what I mean? And there's there, there's no need for that political discourse to happen on that kind of level. But you can have political discourse, like, person to person. I don't feel like that's... Well, you're allowed Too to, bad. I mean... That's but nothing like, preachy, though, you know what I'm saying? Well, if you're talking to someone you know, and you're at an event, I mean, you could talk, people talk at festivals, it's what they're for. Because it's free speech, you can't control what people say. Right, and nor should you. Exactly. I mean, if, if somebody, I'm sure, like, point. I'm sure somebody, while going through the vendors, you know, at Pagan Pride Day this, this, this weekend, will, whoever it may be, will have a conversation about politics while they're walking. Exactly. I mean, it's going to happen. It's okay. It could be something as simple as, like, local politics. Like, oh, did you know that they're uh, opening a new sanitation site? I don't even know if that's a thing. But you know what I mean? Did you hear about the new recycling program? That's political. It's a right. political and it could discussion. Be, like, but they're allowed to talk about that stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it's, yeah. Um, but I think to, to go, to, to be, um, I think, and uh, I think another thing that, that bothers me a lot is people that will attend an event, they'll have a booth, they'll have a thing there, and they go there under the guise of, of not being a political thing, but they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It's almost like, doth you protest too much? You know what I'm saying? It's like... I am a political Donald Trump, blah blah blah, or fuck Trump, or whatever position you're on. It's just don't don't try and infiltrate. I guess is what I'm saying. Don't yeah. try and infiltrate. I think it's shitty. It's like shitty on a witch level. It's shitty on a human level. It's just yeah. shitty. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Save yeah. it for the political. Save it for a political space where that discourse is supposed to happen. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in terms of like, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's almost like, it's like, could you imagine like someone like rolls up to Pagan Pride, right? And like, I'm a candle maker. And then like they roll the blanket off their thing and it's like MAGA hats. It's like, 
No. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And then that puts the organizers in a position that they don't want to be in. They want you to sell your wares. They want you to have a good time. Mm -hmm. They want you to feel comfortable at the event. But you said you were selling candles, not MAGA hats. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, like you said, it really comes down to time and a place for everything. It, it doesn't need to, it, you don't, not everything has to, sometimes life is about living. Not and, everything is about politics. I think that's another thing. Not everything has to be. Sometimes you can just enjoy where you're at. Enjoy, well, yeah, enjoy life. Exactly. Just live. Just because I think, you know what, like, did you know that, um, therapists have seen an increase in in, in um, anxiety, depression. anxiety and depression. I believe it. Just due to the election alone. Yeah, I believe you know, it. and I mean, don't get me wrong; their feelings People are valid. I'm not invalidating. I'm not invalidating. You know, their particular experience, and I, I, I mean, I don't. I, it's funny. I really am not as sympathetic to the other side as you. I'm really not. Um, just because certain certain things that have been done, I just don't have the energy. Uh, and the empathy for that anymore. Um, but... Um, I think I'm just personally at a point, like, it is what it is. Oh, man, I, I don't want to be there. I mean, I just, I'm too scared to be there. For me, it's okay that you are. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, I don't, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. It's yeah. different. It's like, it's like, I have this theory, and I've said this theory to you before. This is going to sound crazy. It's my political theory, you ready? Mm -hmm. very, very far out. I have a feeling... That if you were to sit down with Trump, have coffee with him or whatever, right? And we're just to ask him, like, dude, what is your deal? I think he would just laugh and say, I am running the best con this country has ever seen. I think that's what it would be. That's that's my head cannon. I Both mean, <laughs> a lot of people. I mean, I, I used to, I joked about exactly that when this first started. Yeah. I was, my mom said it too. She's You're like, like, no way he's not going to. My mom said, and I, I mean, me and my mom used to joke about it. We said that he was sitting around with a bunch of his billionaire buddies Wouldn't in a room. Wouldn't it be funny if I ran for drink, president? Yep. And my mom used to say that all the time. All of this is is a giant joke. And what ended up happening was it went out. He didn't think he'd win. It went out of control. Mm-hmm. And he actually, right. And, and that's where I just, I kind of just have to laugh. I mean, Donald Trump is our president. Okay. <laughs> oh, you kind of have to laugh about you, it, you know? It's, like, it's almost, I'm pretty sure some people are like I that. wish I could. When, like, I Ronald just, Reagan was elected. So, yeah. I'm yeah. sure it was, like, the, it was like Ronald Reagan's our president. Or Arnold Schwarzenegger was the governor of California. You gotta laugh. Well, yeah. You gotta laugh about it for, like, yeah. at least a second. And be like, okay, well, wow, that's a thing. I mean, it, it, I'm used to it now. Yeah. But when it first happened, I, I cried for 48 hours. I wasn't happy. I was terrified. I didn't vote for him. He wasn't my guy. I was I terrified. I was terrified of what that meant. And everything of what I thought it meant is exactly what's happening. That's true. I mean, a lot of, a lot of predictions did come true. But, I mean, at the same time, like, I don't, like I said, I don't want this to turn into a fuck Trump episode. But it's just a little hard because both of our opinions of him are the same. We don't like him. Right. That's just like to sum that up. But it is interesting, just because. I and mean, correct me I if I'm wrong. You are more, more centrist. To tolerant. Oh. I'm well, I was going to say. I mean, you're leaning. You seem a little more centrist than I am. I don't really even know what centrist actually means. I'm going to be a hundred percent real with you there. Okay. Um. All right. I always say that I'm liberal because I'm. I'm mostly about like do what you fucking want as long as you don't hurt anybody in the process. You just okay. So you you you're just you're. I think I'm just tolerant. Like I, who is it? Thomas Paine? Is that who it is? That historical quote. I can't remember who it is. I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Mm. I forget Voltaire. I have no idea. I'll look it up and I'll put it in the comments because I'm sure I sound like a really yeah, uneducated American right now. It's but okay. oh yeah, the show notes. But yeah, that's. That's kind of my political moral compass. I don't have to agree with it. You have every right to say it. 
I also don't have to listen to you, though. I like pictures on Instagram that says punch Nazis. So you can imagine where I go. See, <laughs> I'm very opposite. I think that means, like, I see, I see punch a Nazi, and I'm like, why are we punching people now? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I get to that point. I get very... I get very exasperated because both sides are very just... And I'm like, listen, we don't have to punch people. Also, I mean, like, just because someone voted for Trump does not make them a Nazi. You know what I mean? That's the thing. It's like, I don't necessarily (laughs) agree agree with I know, I know, but I... It's almost like saying all white people are racist. Because they're white. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's it's a slippery slope. My point is this. If you want to involve politics in your witchcraft, by all means, go ahead. But when it really, really starts to upset people and cause division and and make people feel unsafe in an environment, in, an, in a collective environment, right. then... I think you need to dial it back, maybe extract the politics, mm-hmm. and approach it from another angle or in another in another space where maybe it's more appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, I can have political. I personally can have political discussions with people without wanting to punch them in the face. For the most part, I don't need to punch them. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't. I don't. Like, I'm pretty much okay. Like, I could probably talk to, like, a diehard conservative whatever, and I could, I'd be fine. Oh, no. I'd be fine. I'd You're be fine. a little different. You're a little more emotionally charged. So I think we just need to to maybe find a way to have better discussions. I think we could use us almost as, like, a good model. Um, yeah. Realistically, I want to be real with you guys. Jay and I had a little bit of a disagreement about this uh, about a month ago. Yeah, we were a little hot. Got a little, yeah. I mean, and and the thing is, is that we're obviously we're still friends. Yeah. I still care. I honestly, I, like, like nothing now changed. I really, get, I don't give a shit. Yeah, nothing <laughs> changed. Um, what I'm trying to simply get it is this: Jay and I agree on some things with this, and then we differ on others. But I think that the point of the matter is learning how to talk to one another, mm-hmm. learning how, like, instead of me, you know, going all like, you know punch Nazis, you know, instead of doing that with Jay, just kind of be like, laugh about it, kind of be real, but you don't have to, don't not be yourself, but maybe learn, know the person you're talking to in the sense of where, you know, the kind of attitude and the tone, the tone of your voice can do a lot for a conversation. Yeah, and, and being being accusatory is generally not the you best don't, Yeah, way. don't, don't, like, especially if you're trying not to, don't sit out, okay, that's another thing, and this is in general, do not sit out for any situation, other political or otherwise, don't sit out to have an argument. Yes, I think, yeah, don't bait people into an argument. Don't bait people. Also, if, if people are being very, um... <laughs> I want to say like a politician and not really stating what they mean. If people are being very um, dodgy about committing to what they're saying, um, especially just on a personal level, do not bait them into saying one thing or another. Yeah, that's not that's, okay. That's not, also not fair. It's not fair. Because they, 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 they might still, li- they might not really know. They, they might, might not know. They might not even be comfortable with talking about it. Yeah, a lot of people aren't. And you know, this is okay. I'm a, once again, I'm about to do the thing that I do where I play devil's advocate. I've had few conversations with people on the far right who have done what I've said about learning learning how to have like learning how to talk mm-hmm. the tone yeah you know where they don't get me wrong what they said still made me angry and what I said still made them frustrated right but it didn't devolve into an argument it was it devolved into an, a, a let's agree to disagree and yeah you know which is generally how most of those conversations go it doesn't really go anywhere you learn a little about it it doesn't other. even go there normally you know it, it just keeps fighting and that yeah. never gets us anywhere either so just don't don't look for a fight in any situation in life look look to find peace look to find inner peace look for self-mastery because honestly, here, here's my thing. 
like as witches and as pagans and and even as queer people and i know we haven't really talked about a lot of like the queer aspect in this episode because being queer is political inherently and that's just my opinion on it <laughs> you it's know so what funny i mean because a lot of people it's funny see we differ there i say you, stop politicizing my sexuality so, so it's so there funny you, go. <laughs> you know what i mean um, well, just because of shit like marriage, you know what I mean? Like, the, right, the, the, for me, they made it political, I did. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I, I think, like, as a queer person, you're kind of forced to be political, yeah. you know? Yeah. But anyway, I think what I'm really getting at is, like, um, remember, I, th- I think it would be really important, especially in the witch community, to remember that you are a witch first, and a political citizen whatever second. I think that would be a really good mindset. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Because all like that. like when it really comes down to it, we're all still marginalized as witches. You know, people don't like us. Some people like us. We like us, but other people don't like us. And, and we still die in certain countries. Exactly, and I think it's important just for us as witches to like be like, you know what? You may feel this way politically, and you and I may feel this way politically, but we're both witches, and we both work with the same energies and the same powers and we are part of the same communities and we do the same workings for the same reasons right and to 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 use this to um memento mori Mm -hmm. um one day you will die and what i'm trying to make a point by that is just simply saying is that upon the day that you return to the earth when you are back to dust or sludge if you get embalmed um and then dirt sludge whatever dust um afterward uh, or ash if you get cremated, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, when, when you go back, when you go back to the earth, that's when that's when you know nothing political matters. Yeah, you're just, you're the only thing you'll have left is witchcraft. Exactly. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, that's the only thing that's left is your your power. Right. Yeah, and you become one of the spirits. You become one of the ancestors. Yeah, the mighty dead. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it really, it really. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Mention more a, one day you will die. The only thing you carry with you is your witch card. Exactly. You're a witch first. And I think that's just important for everyone to remember. And I think I'd like to wrap it up there. I think that's really Sounds good. good to me. All right. So we will see you guys in the next episode. Um, there's a bunch of new social media links. We've got a Reddit. It's all going to be in the show notes. And you'll see it there. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Hello everyone, Scott here. I have been reading tarot for over 10 years. I am an intuitive reader, and through my readings I try to give guidance to aid my clients in navigating their lives. To schedule a reading with me, you can find me on Facebook at Witchwise Seer and Witch. You can also find me over on Instagram and Tumblr with the handle Witchwise, spelled W-Y-T-C-H-W-Y-S-E. You can find links to all of my social media in the show notes. I hope to hear from you.